Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, our weekly check-in with the mayor of Saratoga. Look at Saratoga. Actually, you want to know something? This time of year, we could do it every day. There's <laughs> right? enough going on. Yes. There's so much going on. Uh, welcome back, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, three things I want to cover. Uh, one was yesterday, actually. Very interesting press conference about uh, your efforts with CDTA to provide transportation for more of the people in our community here. Let's talk about That's that. That's right. So our community is very diverse when you look at it. We have 28,000 year-round, but mm -hmm. in the summer, the population sure. goes way up for right. so many reasons. But there are some people that live here year-round in Stonequist Apartments, mm -hmm. uh, which is part of the public housing system. And many of them do not have cars, and they need to get out. They need to do their errands. And CDTA used to come to pick them up for mm -hmm. a regular transportation, and it stopped. Mm -hmm. So I went uh, to Stonequist and had a nice chat with the residents a couple months ago and gave them an update on what was happening in the city and answered all their questions. Mm -hmm. And I do this a lot, just get out and talk to the constituents um, in all different locations of the city. Mm -hmm. and. The one request they had, more than anything, was can you please get the CDTA to come back and pick us up and take us to places like Walmart and the mall mm -hmm. and downtown because we have places to go and errands to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so CDTA worked with me and they managed to get that route back intact Great. and we announced that yesterday with a bus in front of Stonequist Apartments mm -hmm. uh, with people in walkers, people in wheelchairs and you can get on the bus no problem with the ramp and if you have a Medicaid card it's half price. It's only 75 cents. Oh, I got you. You know uh, for, uh, many of us know about Stonequist Apartments. Originally when it was built it was for senior <laughs> living but a lot of people have dis uh, disabilities and uh, the fact that you've got the bus stopping there with handicap access and be able to take them around is really, it means everything to them. It's got to. So the pickup is at yeah. 11 a.m. on mm -hmm. Tuesdays and they'll be dropped back off around 2, 2 p.m. Um, now we've also included the backstretch workers. That's another piece of our population that a lot of people don't right. think about in the summer. 2,500 Spanish-speaking mostly mm -hmm. um, constituents. I think of them as constituents too right. because we want to incorporate them into the city and make them feel welcome. Mm -hmm. So we've managed to have the same bus pick them up every week as well from mm -hmm. the Backstretch Community Center and bring them around town as needed. Mm -hmm. So we're serving two populations that very much need public transportation. I got you. Uh, as usual, you're everywhere. <laughs> you really are, but that's, you know, uh, I really want to compliment you because how do you learn about the needs of the people in the community unless you are everywhere? That's right. You um, need to get out and talk to people. Best and I have met several times about this. I get over to StoneQuest and lots of places to talk to the constituents to find out right. what, they, what they need, what they want. Yeah. And that's my job, to respond and to listen. Well, you do a very good job at that. Hey, I want to talk about the press conference today. Uh, you and I have spoken many times about veterans in the city. Uh, you're making good on one of your campaign yeah. promises. Uh, if I've got it right, you beat it. You went ahead of schedule. But uh, that campaign promise was to end homelessness in Saratoga for veterans. And uh, I'm probably letting the cat out of the bag here because the press conference I think is later on today. But uh, the, uh, tell us about that. So we signed a pledge that came out of the White House and it was a pledge from Michelle Obama actually asking mm -hmm. every mayor in this country to sign a pledge to end veterans homelessness in their city. And as soon as I found out, it's running through the HUD um, department. Right. <clears throat> so as soon as I found out about it from our regional uh, director of HUD, I signed up right away. And so did all the other mayors in the capital region. So we've been working together with our staffs to collaborate efforts. In other words, if we, <clears throat> the first job was to identify who in our communities were veterans and were homeless. So I've counted on my housing task force immensely to help me do that. Because mm -hmm. everybody on the housing task force works with homeless population, mm -hmm. the housing authority, the RPC organization, some private developers who do affordable housing, mm -hmm. um, the vet help group, uh, HUD and the Stratton VA are all on the housing task force with me. So I've counted on them and we put together a list, literally, of individuals that we know about in Saratoga Springs and we feel 
very good about this list. Um, and <clears throat> it started at 21, and we have whittled it down and have found every single one of them a permanent place to live. And I'm very proud of that, but that won't do much good if we don't have a process in place to take care of people as they surface in the future, which we've also incorporated into our right. pledge. Right. You know what? If, there anything, if there's anything out there that's bipartisan, or if there's anything out there that's non-political, it's protecting the veterans. Um, you know, you and I both that's feel right. very strongly about it's that. It's one of the reasons I got into this business. Yeah. I started meeting so many veterans that needed help um, as these wars were becoming closing and mm -hmm. people were coming home and civilian life was so difficult for them. As mm -hmm. you know, I've worked with women veterans mm -hmm. um, so much and got the Guardian House mm -hmm. for homeless right. women vener veterans started. But it's not just... A pl if you don't have that safety of a place to live that mm -hmm. you can call home, mm -hmm. nothing else comes together for that's you. That's right, that's right. So that's why we felt ve ed ending veterans homelessness in Saratoga Springs was so important. And now they can get into other things like training and jobs right, right. And, and back to their social lives and their families. Mm -hmm. But if they don't have that permanent place to live, it's very hard to build their lives. Sure is. Um, I'm going to shift gears here. On my way into work this morning, I, now I know it's <coughs> August and I know the horses are running, but in Centennial Park, Stormcat was missing. Storm <laughs> now, Cat did Stormcat leave? Storm, race? <laughs> yes, Stormcat was here uh, officially June 1st at our first right. dedication of Centennial Park with right. Mary Lou Whitney and John Hendrickson, mm -hmm. who have graciously donated this beautiful park at uh -huh. the end of Union Avenue in Saratoga Springs. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many people already have sat on the benches, enjoyed the fountains, mm -hmm. just watched uh, life go by from yeah, there, sure, and, and enjoying the statue of Stormcat. But Stormcat had to go back to Kentucky, Okay. so his debut in Saratoga <laughs> is once again finished, and uh, we are going to welcome Native Dancer, who is right. the permanent sculpture, piece of art, beautiful mm -hmm. statue that everyone's going to enjoy from here on in. Uh, you know, uh, yesterday, uh, Trotter Furlow was here and we talked a bit about, uh, about Native Dancer. Uh, the Saratoga horse, right? Uh, you know, out of the Whitney stables in the 50s, of course, won all the races and was never defeated at Saratoga. Uh, our handicapper told us yesterday, and I thought to myself, this is just amazing, uh, amazing stuff. And the sculpture, by the way, I saw a picture of it. It, uh, it has a jockey on it, which I didn't expect. Yeah. It's just a really beautiful work it's of gonna art. It's going to look like it's moving, but on Saturday at 11 a.m., right. we're dedicating Nav Native Dancer. We'll unveil Native mm -hmm. Dancer, the artist who's in her 80s mm -hmm. from Kentucky will be there. Fantastic. It's going to say a few words. Some members of the Vanderbilt family will be there. Mm -hmm. And of course, our wonderful Mary Lou Whitney providing mm -hmm. her. She's feeling well that day. And John Hendrickson will be there. And it's just been an amazing experience to work with them, to pull this all together. But this is part of our centennial year and part of the mm -hmm. anniversary of this city that has taken our whole city with great spirit for this entire year uh, by storm. It's just wonderful. Well, I've got to end with one thing, okay? okay. It, uh, I hope I'm not throwing you under the bus, uh, but uh, American Pharaoh? Oh, it's funny you should ask that. Um, <laughs> Naira and I have put together a package that we hope they can't refuse. We were in front of ESPN last Saturday with the mm -hmm. chamber shouting, we want Pharaoh, we mm -hmm. want Pharaoh. Pharaoh started here. Pharaoh needs to come home to Saratoga for Travers, and we hope <laughs> that he will. But the restaurants, the hotels, the limo companies, and you know, the, the local businesses have been extremely supportive. And we feel we've got all our ducks in a row, our horses mm -hmm. in a yeah, row. Horses, right. And we only hope that he does well in the Haskell and that yeah, he chooses right. to run yeah. one more time. And it, we would like it to be Travers here wow, in Saratoga. Wow, can you imagine? All right, good. Nice going. So we'll check in with you next week. Every week there's something to talk about here in Saratoga. So thank you, Mary, for coming Sounds in. Sounds good. Thank you. You're welcome. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.